Hello everyone. I think uh, the issue is sorted now. Uh, my name is Akash and uh, as we all know that today we are going to discuss on this subject of operational excellence and why uh, it is important in the light of Industry 4.0. So that's the subject that we are going to discuss today. Why it's going to be the foundation for the next industrial revolution that we are going to see. So that is what we are going to discuss. We were waiting for the participants to log in. I think there are a fair amount of participants who have logged in already. So we will start. So we will start with the subject. So again, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Akash Borse. I represent this organization called as Paper Infinite, which has been in this domain of uh, operational excellence. And whatever we are going to discuss today has been based on a lot of experience and research in the domain of operational excellence and why it's going to be foundation fundamental for the next revolution. Right, so very quickly, let me share in terms of what is the outline for today's discussion. So we will have a quick snapshot of industrial evolution, how the uh, revolution has panned out. Next, we will talk about the speed and impact of that evolution, how it has impacted all our lives, whether that is our uh, professional lives or personal lives. We'll also talk about the transition landscape, which is a critical aspect of our today's discussion, where we'll invest some amount of time. And we will also talk about the challenges and the way we can address those challenges, so typical challenges across different manufacturing industries. So that is what we are going to discuss. And finally, what's the way forward? So uh, as it is part of our webinar series that whenever we have a subject or a topic that we discuss, one thing that I promise to all the participants that there should be at least one takeaway from the today's discussion which you can implement in your personal or professional life and enrich the way you have been conducting business. So even today's endeavor would be the same. So during this discussion, uh, I'm sure there would be a lot of comments and questions. So there is a comment and uh, question section in front of your screen. You can put your remarks and questions in there. At the right juncture, we will take those questions and we will try and address those points as well. Right. So wonderful. So when we are talking about this wonderful subject, I thank all of you for taking the time out today and investing in the future because as one of the pointers that was mentioned in the introduction of this webinar as well, that the future is coming up and the future is now. So it's like now is the time that we should invest and be prepared for the next evolution. So on that note, uh, there is something interesting that I wanted to share even before starting the actual uh, discussion. So it's like when we are talking about what you see on the screen, I'm sure uh, many of you would be able to correlate, you would have seen this for people who are into the millennials. They may not have seen this operational, but then this is a stone mill which was used for grinding, right? Later, what you saw was a water mill, so which was used for grinding flour, right? So the same concept where we started using the power of steam and water. And later the same application but with a different technology where it was mechanized, right? So what do you see in the screen how it has impacted all these industrial revolutions have impacted our regular routine human life? So it's a flour mill, yeah? And finally what do you see was a mass manufacturing where it was all integrated together and there was mass manufacturing which was initiated. So what started from a stone mill, it, uh, it was fully leveraged to a completely mechanized flour mill. Later, now we are sitting on a juncture where we are getting into the next league of technology and we are getting in how we can further 
utilize the power of internet or uh, that's why you have been talking about internet of things and smart manufacturing to further leverage the technology that we have so we'll discuss about that in a little while so i just wanted to put across one very uh, an example which where we can correlate very easily yeah so right so what you see on the screen is a snapshot of how industrial revolution has happened right so what you see first it started uh, industry 1.0 at the end of 18th century so that's where we started using the power of water and steam and that's where you had mechanical production machines right so mind you uh, one thing that you note that this was in 18th century late 18th century later end of 19th century that's where it can be noted that industry 2.0 or the next revolution of industrialization happened where we started using electric energy for mass production and that's where you had division of labor as well so that's where you had automobile lines assembly lines coming into picture right which also increased the entire output of the manufacturing industry and later in the end on the end of 20th century around 1960 70s where you started seeing industry 3.0 where the power of electronics and it was further put into use in the space of manufacturing right and today where we are standing as we call it industry 4.0 smart manufacturing or industrial iot is where we are going to harness the power of internet primarily for internet of things and services as they call it and where we are going to further strengthen the man and machine partnership right one very important thing that i wanted to bring to your notice if you observe from 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 it took somewhere around a century 100 years but then the change is so fast that today we are standing on a juncture where we will be starting industry 4.0 and we have not even uh, looked at maybe a quarter century or maybe at max half a century for this change to happen so the change is coming very fast whether we like it or not and this is where we need to prepare ourselves so that is one of the very important underlying statement that i wanted to bring to your notice today right and another aspect is what you see on the other axis is the level of complexity has continuously gone up so as you progress from one revolution to another one the level of complexity is going to go up right obviously it comes with a lot of uh, anxiety what do we have in stake in the future so that is what we will try to uh, address in due course also right. so the very important fundamental statement is the transformation is inevitable transformation is the key the change is going to come faster than you expect are you ready so that's where all our endeavor the entire team endeavor is to be prepared to pull up our socks and be prepared for the future right mm -hmm. so that's where we'll be talking about how we can equip ourselves whether that is our operational excellence or whether that is organizational transformation so what all things that we need to do what would be the road map that is what we'll be discussing right so i i was uh, talking about the speed at which it is coming so to bring it into perspective and to put it into perspective what you see on the screen none of these things existed in 2006 so there was no iphone there was no ipad there was no kindle there was no uber there was no android even whether that's whatsapp instagram whatever you see on the screen right now it was not there in 2006 and today we are in 2009 so it's barely within a span of 10 to 12 years you cannot imagine your life without these things in your life right so it's that fast when it comes to the evolution or the change in technology space which is happening so we have to be equipped as industries as well to look at all these changes and that's where role of consulting organization or coaches come into place how we can be prepared right so another aspect if you look at it in terms of speed 
So how much time it took for any new concept to reach 100 million customers? If you compare it, telephone took 75 years. The internet took seven years. Then if I were to look at something like Instagram, WhatsApp or Pokemon Go, which was a rage or whether that is PUBG today, it took less than 0.1 year to reach 100 million. See, you can look at the speed of connectivity or the power of connectivity which has led us to this particular speed of implementation. Right. So the evolution is extremely fast. You need to be prepared today and now. I told you, see on the screen as well, there was, I'm sure many of you would have seen this particular clip, which talks about the evolution of the desk. So it's a very small clip. For the benefit of uh, everyone, I would want to quickly run through it. Okay. It's not working. Anyways, yeah. So. It's not working out. Yeah, so that was a quick, quick glance. So just to put in perspective what has happened over the years, the speed of all the technology that we see is phenomenal. So that's where we need to be ready, and that's the next part when it comes to what all things have changed. So if I were to take about a few examples relating to our own personal lives. So there are a few examples, so whether that is in terms of wearable devices, so that's where you have uh, different technologies and different uh, organizations which are working in that direction. So whether that is Ralph, Ralph Lauren, which is talking about wearable uh, clothes, whereas in clothes which have all the technology inbuilt into it, which is talking about your body movement, your in heart rate, your pulse rate, or whether that is in terms of calories burned. Similarly, if I were to talk about the lighting, Philips came up with this concept of uh, technology connected as in devices connected to the lighting and which is kind of a very common thing today. So the technology has gone to that extent that if I were to talk about one of our clients which is into lighting today talks about that the lighting would kill bacteria or microorganisms. So it is in designed in that way. So the evolution of product is phenomenal, right? So it's everywhere. Whether you observe it or not, so it's everywhere, wherever you go. So that's where today everyone is talking about IoT and smart cities, right? So the same concept applies to the industries as well, the factories. So today, if I were to talk about today's factory, where majority of them have implemented this concept of operational excellence on the floor. So where you have a production line, which is a sequence. So for example, what you have on the screen is a car manufacturing set up. So it is a kind of a production line. It is synchronized in such a way as per the customer demand rate, which is the tag time or the and the cycle time. It is designed with maximum potential and highest efficiency. But at the same time, many of the organizations are yet to even reach there. So that is something that we wanted to dwell upon in uh, today's discussion. And if I were to just to bring to your notice about tomorrow's factory, what we are talking about, a completely flexible facility, which is decoupled, which can consider or bring into the implementation as per the customer demands, as per the flexibility in the market requirements. So that has to be integrated into our manufacturing system. 
So that's where people have been talking about highly integrated manufacturing systems, right from customer to supplier, so right from upstream still downstream. So all of that has to be in sync, and for which operational excellence has to further play another uh, role and go into further steps. So which is what we'll be discussing. So here, unless and until we have this into place, so whether that is as fundamental as uh, operational excellence or the next, what next in operational excellence, we won't be able to migrate completely from 3.0 to 4.0. So whether we like it or not, but then the entire world is going to go there, and that's where we will have to put in our heads down and implement the basic hygiene uh, systems into place. So that's where we will be talking about in the next course. So unless and until we are ready, we won't be able to implement any of this. So what are those elements that we should consider? What is that transition landscape that we should be considering? So that is what our next point of discussion would be. So what you see on the screen is a step-by-step -step approach from, as in for if, uh, if one is looking to transit from industry 3.0 to 4.0. So these are like four stages where one could be at any given point of time in the journey from 3.0 to 4.0. Now, uh, this framework has been devised based on World Economic Forum research and Paper Infinite Book Global Research. So it has been adapted from that research. So this is where we'll invest some amount of time today where we are going to talk about what all things one needs to be doing, right? So in terms of operational excellence, which is fundamental for us to go from 3.0 to 4.0, but there have been cases where several organizations could be one step before the operational excellence, what you see on the screen. So that's where I would want to draw your attention and maybe we spend a couple of minutes there. So here in this, Case where you have a typical uh, traditional setup, you'll have a lot of things which is person dependent because of the lack of systems and structure. So that is something that one needs to take care and there has to be a paradigm shift where we are talking about a system driven and a structured dependent organization. Also, there have been cases where we are talking about availability of data. So data availability might be there in such organizations, but then it would be, it could be isolated at different locations and or in different formats. So whether that is an ERP or whether you talk about an Excel bypass or whether you talk about having it handwritten. So, but then that availability of that data in itself may not make sense or it would not be that helpful. So that's where it calls or it falls under a category where we call it as a data handicap. So unless and until we are able to utilize that particular data for further implementation or decision making, it has very limited usage. So this is a typical traditional setup. Many of the organizations have already migrated or are in the process of uh, migration from this step to the next one. So uh, having said that, I wanted to draw attention of the audience that there have been cases even today that there are organizations in here. So we are lucky if we are already in step two or three. So what entails in step two when we call it as operational excellence? So one of the major, major elements in here and in a manufacturing setup is the material velocity. So when it comes to material velocity, it talks about not only material velocity, but also the information uh, velocity, information flow. So here we are talking about material flow as well as information flow. Even today, there have been cases where clients are further trying to harness and improve on this material velocity. So there have been several cases, several of our clients who have already taken steps, but they would want to be prepared for the next league or next uh, revolution. So and squeeze out all the inefficiencies in the system. So that's where elements like value stream mapping, or fundamental tools like value stream mapping can come in handy which talks about improving the material velocity or typical value adding ratio and eliminating all the inefficiencies in the system. The next one which talks about is asset utilization. So fundamental elements of uh, operational excellence are 
even more important when we are talking about industry 4.0. So when it calls for asset utilization, it not only focuses on the equipment uh, availability, but it also focuses on the performance of the equipment and the quality output that we are talking about. So there have been cases where we can further build upon the existing maintenance practices what any organization has and squeeze out more from the existing resources. So all those hidden capacity losses are identified and can be addressed by a fundamental called as overall equipment effectiveness improvement. So that is another element which organizations have already realized and further tightening the bolts before they plunge into industry 2.0. Similarly, whether that is in terms of operator productivity or manpower productivity or operation cost reduction, those elements are equally important and depending on the nature of business, which element is going to contribute more is prioritized. So there have been cases where we are talking about whether it is a discrete manufacturing or a process manufacturing setup. So the prioritization can vary from industry to industry. And there have been solutions, whether structured solutions, whether that is in terms of operator or manpower productivity improvement or specific cost reduction initiatives. Now, why I wanted to draw your attention to the centerpiece, what you see today, is because that's where majority of the organizations stand today and we need to build that linkage between operational excellence and the step three which is man and machine partnership so we'll have to further leverage on utilization of the data which is there of the synchronized systems that we have before we plunge into industry 4.0 or autonomous full economy or smart manufacturing setup where we have end-to-end -end automation where we have continuous demand sensing right from the downstream till the upstream so there is a continuous connection in terms of data availability and that transparency which obviously will help us optimize the resources and that's where you talk about having two machines talk to each other so for, but, for, but for that to happen it is extremely important that we have the centerpiece the step number two and three extremely sound and uh, the foundation has to be strong enough. So that's where all the organizations which are looking to gear up for Industry 4.0 are tightening those bolts and squeezing out any inefficiencies which is there in the system by means of whether that is value stream mapping or whether that is in terms of improving the equipment performance or whether that is in terms of manpower productivity improvement. The reason for this is once I have standardized and as an improve the processes and standardize them that is when it makes more sense for anyone to automate them or put in technology bit into existence so it's something like if i'm talking about two machines talk to each other it is extremely important for me as a manufacturing setup to define what is going to be the standard working process inventory between the two machines right so typically when it comes to industry 4.0 the first and foremost thing that comes to mind is where you have two machines talk to each other and they control the speed of production as per the customer requirement. So easiest of uh, industry 4.0 application is on the energy consumption part or whether that is on the maintenance part. So for that to happen, one needs to have a standard defined and implemented which is extremely stringent with low least tolerances and top class quality output, right? So we'll take a few examples and in terms of what are the challenges what uh, come up. So we will discuss on those examples. But before we discuss, there is something that I wanted to draw your attention to. So in terms of when it comes to journey, the current phase of journey towards smart manufacturing or industrial IoT, it is in transition from operational excellence to man and machine partnership based on the detailed research that our team has done. But the fundamental element is lacking in several organizations is this part, operational excellence, as in a transition from operational excellence to man and machine partnership. So that's where we will invest our next part of the discussion and we'll go into those uh, challenges bit by bit. 
So I think uh, the, uh, the speed is okay. I will go to the next part. So there are some facts that I wanted to bring to your notice, which is kind of a reflection of what I have just mentioned in terms of why we uh, our research says that majority of the organizations have been struggling in this linkage from operational excellence to management in partnership. Is if I were to compare organizations uh, across the world and which are there in Asia, only 12% of the organization from Asia have been practicing operational excellence for more than a decade. Whereas if you compare that with the rest of the world, it's 23%. So that's the difference we're talking about. Only almost 50% is the gap. If I were to talk about further detail, 43% of the manufacturers have an op operationally smart factory initiative, but majority of them have been struggling. Around 55% of the businesses in Asia believe that they will have to invest in strategic and operational excellence initiatives even before they further roll this out. Right? Whereas there are only 6% of the organizations which fall under the category of being digital masters. Right or who have digitized those production processes. So there's a very little chunk, but the majority of the organizations are still in that phase where they would want to reap more and get the, this benefit from the next evolution. So this is where I was talking about typically what are those challenges in the transition. So I will touch upon few, what you see on the screen. So what we have highlighted, the nine of them I'll touch upon few of them. So if I were to pick up the first one, so which is like what could be the challenge in this transition from 3.0 to 4.0 or uh, from operational excellence to man and machine partnership. The first one is having a clarity of new strategy or setting up new business models which would be relevant in uh, the next evolution industry 4.0. So I'm sure many of you would have noticed there was this very recent piece of news which was talking about that Maruti is going to discontinue the diesel vehicles, diesel cars in India. So Maruti, which is one of the largest automotive manufacturing company in the country, they're going to discontinue diesel vehicles by April 2020. So that is, I'm talking about within a span of another 10 odd months. So many of you would be talking and thinking that why such decision has been taken. So is it because of the environmental uh, uh, concern or is it because of the regulatory authority? So obviously those elements are there, but at the same time if you look at it, there is a business uh, reason as well. So it's like if you talk about transition of uh, the norms from BS4 to BS5, you're talking about additional cost in those vehicles in those engines so which is much higher in terms of when it comes to diesel vehicle or diesel engine as compared to the petrol variant now here that is one of the costs and that is one of the reason which is going to increase the cost of the vehicle at the same time the price differential between the petrol and diesel is also going to go down further so putting all of this in mind maruti has strategically taken this decision of discontinuing the diesel engine. But at the same time, there could be an another aspect to it where we are talking about elements like value engineering can also be put in place when it comes to the cost of the vehicle or those diesel variants. The point that I wanted to drive here is when it comes to preparing for the next revolution, we will also need to keep in, the in mind the requirements of the business scenarios and different dynamic situations. So that is something that one needs to keep in mind when it comes to designing the entire strategy. Right. So another aspect which is extremely important is understanding your own business case and leading successful pilot. Now this is very important because there have been several, I would say, directions, there have been several pieces which have been communicated in different forums we are talking about industry 4.0. But then unless and until we identify what is relevant to our own situation, our own business, we won't be able to take any step further. But once it is understood, it is also equally important to lead and implement those uh, pilots in successful areas. So 
Typically, if I were to draw one uh, real life case, use case, where one of our clients, which is into engineering domain, has been uh, into heavy engineering and uh, application domain. So when we conducted a detailed value stream mapping exercise for them and where we identified the inefficiencies, so which was not only at the manufacturing process, but also even beyond the manufacturing process. So that's where it is very important to identify where the actual inefficiencies lie and where we can have maximum value squeezed out. So that's where one of the elements of the um, inefficiency which was hitting out was in terms of the design time what was taken. So here by identifying that one of the major challenges if addressed will have maximum benefit was in design name time, the throughput time or the turnaround time in the design section. So if we can work around that, that would be extremely beneficial for the entire throughput time. So that's where the technology piece was put in place where we are talking about the design time for Standard variant took somewhere around three days of entire rendering that was brought down to as less as three minutes. Now, when we are talking about this particular reduction of time with the help of technology, one thing is extremely important is identifying where you need to invest or identifying where it would give me maximum uh, bank as in maximum for the buck. And second one is for me to implement, it was extremely important to have standardization in place. So unless and until all the components are standardized in the engineering uh, domain, I won't be able to leverage the benefit of the technology that I'm talking about. So that is where operational excellence comes into picture of where to put the technology, where we can have maximum benefit and how we can ensure that we can leverage the technology with right standards in place. So that is something that one needs to keep in mind. Similarly, what you see in terms of uh, growth initiatives, obviously everybody is looking to implement this uh, industry 4.0 or industrial IoT and they would want to ride the wave of this growth initiative, but then it is extremely important what prioritize, prioritization exercise that we are doing and where we are putting it in place. So one of our clients, which is into one of the largest paper uh, manufacturing, paper process, paper product uh, manufacturing domain. So here, when we started the entire engagement with them, one of the focus was obviously in the uh, domains of manpower productivity. That is a challenge in many of the organizations. But uh, if we further delve into it, so that's where when we started a complete detailed diagnostic for them, which we call it as alignment and analysis exercise, of which we will discuss separately. So here, once that detailed exercise was conducted on the floor at the client side, the results of that priority exercise were completely different, were startlingly different. In terms of, obviously, manpower productivity improvement had benefits and potential, but at the same time, there was much larger potential and benefit in the in the areas of equipment performance or in the areas of throughput improvement. So for that matter, that's where the consulting team took up an initiative and started working on equipment performance uh, improvement. So whether that is in terms of availability, performance and quality and also the throughput improvement of the plant. So that's where it is extremely important for any organization to prioritize which initiative that one is going to focus upon. The another thing that I would want to highlight here as we are talking about challenges and what all things we need to consider from an operational excellence perspective is having a structured organizational transformation framework. Now, there have been cases that there are several of them, several of the industries who have been saying that we have initiated any change uh, initiative, we have already started and we have completed. But then, for example, it could be we started lean, we have implemented, now we are implementing Six Sigma, we have done that. But unless and until we have a structured organizational transformation framework, it would be very difficult for anyone to sustain it and to reap the maximum benefit of it. 
So that's where one needs to have a proper mechanism in terms of a framework, how we are going to implement those solutions. So when it comes to when we have a management uh, goal book in terms of operational excellence, how are, how are we going to cascade that to the people on the ground, to my supervisor or the execution staff, that is extremely important. So that's where you have policy deployment mechanism for, for uh, effective implementation of those operational excellence strategy. So that is extremely important. Even as we jump to industry 4.0, you need to have a transformation framework. So with a strong foundation of four M's, which is man, method, material, and machine. At the same time with a focus on how we are going to have an efficient and structured uh, system. So these are the few elements which talks about in terms of what are the challenges that we are facing. At the center, what you see which is uh, extremely critical is a change management mindset because that is something which is fundamental. So whether we are going in for a operational excellence initiative or an ERP or industry 4.0, because that is finally we are going to deal with people. And how are we going to manage that change? That is extremely critical for success of any such initiative. And which is frequently overlooked. In fact, there have been several cases where one comes with a mindset that we would want to implement one tool, whether that could be a, say, a tool like value stream mapping or 5S or any tool. But then when it comes to handling the people on the ground and their issues and challenges from a software aspect, that is extremely important. And that's where a consulting organization or a consulting output can come into place where we are talking about, uh, where we are talking about in terms of uh, putting to play, putting to use different change management frameworks. So whether that is a Nostos model or whether that is a framework which is talking about how am I going to identify people who are early adopters or how am I going to identify laggards. So these policies of change management or frameworks of change management are extremely important and should be taken into consideration. So obviously it's a very vast subject. I have not touched upon any of the elements of industrial IoT infrastructure, that is the technology bit, which we can discuss in due course. That is a separate subject altogether. Today we wanted to invest some time on the operational excellence elements and what all elements in terms of software issues that one needs to consider for operational excellence. So way forward, if I were to simplify it, there are like four different levels. You could be on any one of them and we'll have to progress from level one through level four. So step number one or level one should be availability of the data. That is extremely important whether that is in any format, in any, uh, I would say any format, whether that is soft, hard, or even different uh, things like whether you call it Excel bypass. The next one is accessibility of that data. That is level number two. How we are going to access that data, how we are going to collate that data. So if we are at on, already at level one, we have to progress to level uh, two. In terms of basic stability, I mentioned already that there are four ends. We'll have to have basic stability of all four of them. That is something that we will have to uh, be aware of. Level three is where we are talking about data activeness and proactive improvement. So once that data is accessible, what all meaning or what all analysis that we are going to put in that our engineering team or continual improvement team is going to put in, that is extremely important and all the improvements happen proactively. So I think many of the organization are already on level three and level four is where we are talking about having that data talk to 
each other and highlight the improvement initiative on its own. So that is something majority of the organizations are looking to go towards to. Then it's a complete uh, journey which needs a strong foundation of operational excellence for any organization to move to industry 4.0. So uh, before we summarize and uh, take a pause for questions and comments, just wanted to highlight some of the benefits what can be reaped from effective and smart manufacturing initiatives. So as I was mentioning that it is extremely uh, logical for any organization to initiate smart manufacturing or industrial as an industrial IoT from equipment. So there have been cases where clients have seen 20% reduction in energy consumption. Maintenance cost has gone down by 25%. Maintenance, as in breakdowns, have gone down by 70%. Unplanned out outages have been reduced by more than 50%. At the same time, what operational excellence has been delivering, then there have been plenty of such success stories. So whether that is in terms of throughput improvement, or whether that is in terms of Availability of materials, so uh, reducing stock out, or whether that is on time delivery performances, whether that is production capacity improvement. In fact, yesterday I was talking to one of our uh, clients, which is in the chemical industry, and they have been mentioning in the past uh, uh, the whole purpose of us engaging with them is they are always short supplying. And in a manufacturing domain, I keep mentioning that if we already have a demand and if they are unable to cater to it, it is the crime of the highest level. So that is something that one needs to address internally, which is within our hands and we should definitely uh, take benefit of existing uh, frameworks available and look at progressing or migrating to the next lead. So that is for today. And I would again end this uh, presentation by this note where we are talking about that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now, which is today. So let us prepare for the future. Let's be ready even before the future comes upon us. Let's be ready and pounce on this opportunity of Industry 4.0, which has come up. <laughs>